Hello everyone, this is Remlays from 40k Theories, and welcome to this new episode of 40k Law for Newcomers. For this episode, nominated on Patreon by Brask, we will be taking a brief look at the Elysian Drop Troop Regiments of the Astra Militarum. This video will be a brief overview for certain events that may be explored in greater depth within additional videos in the future. So without further ado, let's begin. When you decide to die, remember to give your enemy the same honour. The Elysian Drop Troops are elite Astra Militarum regiments that are famed for their airborne operations and rapid deployment capabilities. Unlike the majority of other regiments found throughout the Imperial Guard, the Drop Troops do not simply march into battle, nor do they deploy their forces in a typical manner. Instead, these regiments, true to their name, will regularly drop deep into the heart of enemy territory, either by disembarking from the holds of Valkyrie Assault Carrier aircraft, or more commonly by utilising graph chutes in order to descend from high altitudes and catch their enemies unaware. Because of this unique method of deployment, the drop troops will favour smaller, lightweight fast attack vehicles such as drop sentinels or Torox all-terrain vehicles which can be carried within the hold of Valkyries. However, this comes at the cost of these regiments regularly lacking heavy weapons support from tanks and artillery. While this may make the drop troops appear unsuited to prolonged military engagements, these regiments will often be accompanied by entire companies of the elite shock troops known as Tempestus Scions, whose superior training and weaponry perfectly complements the skills and tactics employed by the drop troops. More often than not, the swift and brutal strikes enacted by these airborne regiments have proven more than once to be a fatal blow against the enemies of man. From the skies. Originating from the world of Elysia, the drop troops can trace their origins back to at least M38, though it is likely that these regiments were founded at an even earlier date. For several millennia, the regions of space surrounding the Elysia system were plagued by numerous pirate and orc warbands, due to the presence of a primary trade route for the entire sector being located close by. The presence of numerous asteroid fields and vast clouds of dust and debris provided countless places where such raiders could lie in wait, before striking at any merchant vessels that made their way through this particular region. In order to combat against these threats, the Elysian military would begin launching a series of assaults against pirate strongholds and any ships detected nearby. These soldiers would become experts in ship-to-ship -ship boarding actions, and would succeed in driving many pirates out of the system, though some would inevitably still remain as a constant nuisance for the drop troops to deal with. In time, the skills honed against these pirates and raiders would mould the drop troops into swift and highly efficient soldiers, and their unorthodox tactics would go on to serve these men and women well for generations to come. The earliest documented campaign conducted by the Elysian drop troops would take place in M38, with what is known as the Scopius Incident. The tech priests of the Adeptus Mechanicus would discover a fused amalgamation of starships, known as a Space Hulk, before towing it to the asteroid of Scopius, which was being used by the Mechanicus as both a research and containment facility. Some time after this, contact with the facility would become lost, and in response, the 22nd Elysian Drop Troop Regiment was sent to determine the reason why. Colonel Prince deployed a number of reconnaissance companies to investigate the facility, which initially seemed to be utterly deserted. It would not be long, however, until contact with an unknown enemy was made resulting in numerous skirmishes between the recon squads and their mysterious adversaries. While Prince had no clear idea of the enemy that his men faced, the intel fed to him suggested that they were humanoid, fast and powerful, leading to the colonel suspecting Eldari Corsairs or Drukhari Raiders. In response, Prince would order for his entire regiment to prepare for drop deployment. 
Captain Schultz of the Third Recon Company would discover that the facilities of the world's primary manufactorum had been drastically altered, and had begun constructing what appeared to be robotic skeletons. As Prince ordered for his men to find a way to shut down the assembly line, his astropaths would begin warning him of an ancient evil located beneath the surface of the world that was slowly driving them insane with terror. Prince would then order for a full-scale assault upon the facility to destroy everything that they came across. As Prince led an assault upon the main complex, he would discover that the third company had vanished without a trace. Soon after this, Prince and his men would discover a strange alien edifice from which a tall, skeletal creature emerged before it launched itself at his men with frightening speed. With the appearance of this creature, the cybernetic warriors that had been recently produced would activate, leading to a fierce firefight between Imperial and Xenos forces. Eventually, the colonel would order for a full-scale retreat, while simultaneously ordering for the fleet in orbit to begin a heavy bombardment of the world. As the drop troops made it off-world, the fleet's bombardment would not only destroy the Scopius facility, but the entire asteroid, shattering it into dust. While the Xenos structures upon Scopius were presumed destroyed, a strict quarantine was implemented surrounding where the asteroid once was, with the region being declared Pergatus. Colonel Prince would go on to earn both fame and respect for his actions, and would later earn the title of Imperial War Master during the course of the Catholic Crusade. One hammer blow will be all it takes. Place the men on alert. Summon the reserves. We crush them here and now. For the Emperor! Over the millennia, the Elysian drop troops would go on to fight within numerous war zones against countless foes, with the regiments taking part in conflicts such as the Batalus Campaign, the Third Armageddon War, and even aid Imperial forces during the course of Abaddon the Despoiler's 13th Black Crusade. One of the more notable operations the drop troops participated in was during the course of the Taros Campaign, with what became known as Operation Comet. After 42 days of intense fighting between Imperial forces and the Tau Empire over the world of Taros, Lord Commander Gustavus and his officers would make plans to capture the world's water supply, hoping to cut the Tau off from such a vital resource. This plan, named Operation Comet, involved the Elysian 23rd Regiment, along with a number of Tempestus Scions, deep striking behind enemy lines in order to take control over the world's key hydro farms. The Elysians would successfully capture Hydro Processing Plant 2330, prompting the Tau to launch a counter-attack the following day. Despite being subjected to a series of strafing runs by Xenos aircraft and a Tau armoured offensive, the drop troops, thanks to support from Imperial Navy fighter craft, would succeed in holding the hydro farm, forcing the Tau to begin a full-scale siege of the processing plant. On the third day of fighting, the Elysians would eventually be overwhelmed by Xenos forces. The Tau would offer the Imperials the chance to surrender, but the Elysians refused. Remaining defiant to the very end, the drop troops would continue to fight before eventually being wiped out by Tau forces, though General Saikava and a small number of drop troops would be taken prisoner. The Tau ethereal Aun Vri would offer the General a chance to join the Tau Empire, and in exchange be granted both immense wealth and the title of commander of the Taros garrison for life. The General would refuse this offer, however, resulting him and the surviving Elysians being taken to a Tau detention facility. Saikava and his fellow Elysians, however, would successfully escape from their incarceration and make their way into the desert in search of allies. Saikava would eventually be found by soldiers of the Talan Desert Raiders and taken to a field hospice to be treated for his wounds. Following this series of events, Saikava would undergo extensive cybernetic enhancement before entering the service of Inquisitor Varius of the Ordo Xenos. 
Every position must be held to the last man. There must be no retirement. With our backs to the wall, and believing in the justice of our cause, each one of us must fight on to the end. Unlike many other Astra Militarum regiments, recruitment into the drop troops is done predominantly on a voluntary basis. Should one wish to become a member of these elite regiments, prospective recruits are required to complete at least one year of service within the world's planetary defense force. Once this tour of duty is completed, recruits will then be taught in how to make use of grav shoots as well as additional combat and survival skills. In addition, each drop troop is extensively trained in the art of demolition, including not only the use of demolition charge explosives, but also in how to operate the remote-controlled Cyclops demolition vehicle, allowing them to breach the bulkheads of ships or the reinforced walls of enemy strongholds. As part of their training, the drop troops become highly accomplished guerrilla fighters that are masters of covert operations, hit and run tactics and devastating ambushes, as well as performing long range reconnaissance and capturing battlefield objectives for their allies, whilst being able to stubbornly deny them to the enemy. They are also extremely well equipped, allowing them to operate behind enemy lines without resupply for prolonged periods of time. Whilst the aircraft assigned to many Imperial Guard regiments are often piloted by members of the Imperial Navy, the gunships and transports assigned to the drop troopers are piloted by members of the regiment, with their pool of vehicles including Valkyrie assault carriers as well as Vulture and Vendetta gunships. This assortment of aircraft allows the Elysians to not only perform their aerial deployments into enemy territory, but also provide heavy weapons and anti-aircraft fire, allowing the drop troops to carry out their orders without distraction. And that concludes this episode of 40k Law for Newcomers. If you liked this video, consider supporting us on Patreon for more content. To those who are new to 40k, we hope you learned something. So leave a comment below, and thanks for watching.